Now, let's look more in depth at what happens in mitochondrial dysfunction and its role in autism. So we'll start by looking at mitochondria. Obviously, most people don't spend a lot of time thinking about mitochondria, and it's a very complex area of biology. It's hard to wrap your mind around, but I think it's important to have a basic understanding because it can really inform how you think about testing and treatment. So let's start with something that's more intuitive, and that's the human body. Um, the human body has many different systems and organs, and each has its own distinct function. But all of these are made up of a basic unit, which is the cell. And on the left here is what I think is a rather stunning microscopic view of an actual human cell. And on the right is an illustration. And the body of an adult has close to 100 trillion cells. And inside the cells are many subcellular organelles. And among these are the mitochondria, which are circled here in red. Now, this illustration only shows two mitochondria. But in fact, a single cell can have up to several thousands of mitochondria. And what determines the density of mitochondria in any tissue is its energy requirement. So tissues that require more energy, for example, the brain and the muscle, because they're very metabolically active, will have a higher density of mitochondria. And those areas tend to be the parts that show signs of poor function when mitochondria aren't functioning well. There are other organs in the body that are also very metabolically active, like the heart, the liver, the kidneys, and pancreas. And that, I think, is useful for you to know because when a child has autism or other neurodevelopmental disorder, if family members have diseases affecting these other organs, it makes it more likely that the child's, um, that mitochondrial dysfunction is playing a factor in the child's difficulties as well. So I'd like to show you this brief video. It's put together by a really wonderful organization you may know called MitoAction, and they provide education and support to families. This video gives what I think is one of the best overviews of how mitochondria work. At MitoAction.org, we're dedicated to educating the community and supporting people with mitochondrial disease, or MITO. MITO is sometimes called the invisible disease because there are potentially many different symptoms and not all patients will exhibit every one. Mitochondrial disease is when the energy producing centers in your cells work less efficiently. These centers are called mitochondria. Let's take a closer look. You're looking at muscle cells. These cells actually make up your muscles. Mitochondria live inside of your cells. In energy-hungry cells, like muscle cells, there can be thousands of mitochondria all converting energy. They are the tiny powerhouses of your body. Inside of these energy factories is where your food, broken down into microscopic pieces, is turned into the energy your cells need. Some cells may need more than others. Producing even one unit of energy is a colossal task. It requires five different energy stations. The first four stations produce energy, making fuel with the use of energy carriers. Every station must work perfectly in order to produce enough energy. Station 1 and 2 accept energy from food. Energy carriers, upon reaching stations 1, 3, and 4, lift our fuel up to the delivery network. The fuel travels down the network to station 5. When the fuel arrives, it collects in a large container. When the container is full, one unit of energy is fueled for launch. and off it goes. If any station breaks, then our unit of energy will never be produced. If the mitochondria are sick, then they will not produce enough energy for the cell the cell will get tired.
if the cells of your body are tired, you'll feel it too. Older people have less energy because their mitochondria have gotten tired. A common symptom of mitochondrial disease is weakness and being tired all the time. Mito can affect many important organs in your body. There are many symptoms of Mito. Each patient expresses different ones. As you can see, Mito affects a lot of us. It is also related to a wide number of other diseases. Together with MitoAction.org, we can create a better future for every child and adult battling mitochondrial disease. So let's look more specifically at how mitochondrial dysfunction relates to autism. At the end of the video, they referred to brain disorders as one of the types of diseases that MITO is related to. And just in the past several years, research has really started to show that autism is one of those brain disorders where mitochondrial dysfunction is very likely to be common. So this uh, was a study at UC Davis looking at a range of biomarkers for mitochondrial dysfunction in children with autism compared to neurotypical children. And it found that 80% of children with autism had signs of mitochondrial dysfunction on biochemical tests. And the test that they did looked specifically at the activity of the mitochondrial respiratory chain complexes that you saw in the video. And here are several other research publications that have come out in the past 10 years, all showing evidence for mitochondrial dysfunction in autism. This is a review article in which the researchers analyzed the results of 18 different studies and found that 78% of those with autism had blood tests indicating mitochondrial dysfunction. And this is an excellent review paper published in 2012. And here the researchers explain how mitochondrial dysfunction can connect many of the different medical symptoms associated with autism, including symptoms in many different organs like the brain, the muscle, gastrointestinal system, and endocrine system, as well as others. I have packets here for all of you that have the abstracts so that you'll know you can look at these research studies in more, in more depth. Uh, this is a book that you might be familiar with. Martha Herbert is a pediatric neurologist and a professor at Harvard Medical School. And this book, I think, has been very important in bringing attention to mitochondrial dysfunction and some of the other medical aspects of autism that can be treated. She explains that problems with the mitochondria create problems for the whole body, in particular the brain, which uses huge amounts of energy. And she also describes how many different types of triggers can lead to mitochondrial dysfunction, including gene mutations, shortages of key vitamins and minerals in the diet, certain chemicals, heavy metals and drugs, certain bacteria and viruses, and stress. So as I mentioned earlier, mitochondrial dysfunction is a potential explanation for how many different types of environmental factors might lead to autism.